One of the best things about running is its accessibility. You barely need any gear and you can run pretty much anywhere. Although I might avoid busy roadways such as highways, but to each their own. But that doesn't mean there's not a couple of pieces of gear that we could pick up to make our running experience just a little bit more enjoyable. Today we're going to be talking about the top five pieces of gear I recommend to newer runners to make their running journey just a little bit more enjoyable. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Brendan and I upload videos multiple times a week all about the sport of running, from running shoe reviews to helping the beginner runner get started on their running journey. If that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button right down below, it really means a lot. And maybe hit the like button, it helps out the channel a ton. Now let's get into these gears. Starting off with the flip belt. Now, what problem does this solve, you ask? It solves running storage. I don't know about you, but when I go out there running, I typically have my phone, my GoPro, my car keys, maybe my wallet or like my credit cards or something, depending on where I'm running and how long I'm running. The issue is a lot of the running pants and running shorts I have barely have enough room for my phone. So they typically have no pockets in the front and maybe one little pocket in the back. And if you're lucky, you can fit your phone in there. Maybe I just need to get a smaller phone, who knows, but I'm pretty extra and I like to have a big phone. So, that's just, I, I needed to solve that issue. The flip belt solved that issue. I can stuff this thing so darn full. I can fit my phone, my GoPro, my car keys, my wallet, pretty much anything you can think of, I can fit in here. They even have water bottles that can fit in here. It's, it's amazing, it's like super stretchy. And one thing that I was pretty concerned about when I first got it is, is it gonna keep on falling down and distract me from my run? Is it gonna be uncomfortable? And the answer to all those things is absolutely not. It does get a little sweaty in the summer, but while we're moving off into the fall and winter, I haven't had any issues in terms of warmth. Now guys, how much is it? It's 30 US dollars or 40 Canadian dollars. So it's, it's not extremely cheap, but it's definitely not the most expensive piece of gear you could get. And I think that it solves a pretty massive problem for most runners. And it's quite easy to use. Like I'll show a video right here of me stuffing it full. That was another thing. I didn't understand how the thing worked, but there's these little holes here and you can stuff them with your phones and wallets and GoPros and whatever else you can think of. I don't know, maybe you wanna, like, you know, those little shots that you can buy at the liquor store. Maybe you like to do that. I, I've known a couple of people that like to take a little bit of a shot when they're on their runs. Is that you? Let me know in the comment section down below. On to the second piece of gear. Next up is resistance bands. And you're probably thinking to yourself, how is this elastic band gonna help me with running, Brendan? Are you out of your mind? And I'm gonna tell you, I might be out of my mind. However, what I think this helps you solve is the issue of mobility, strengthening, and recovery as a runner. Now, something new runners struggle with a lot is being able to get into a good recovery and maintenance routine. That is something that is completely underestimated by newer runners and something that if you implement early in your running routine, you're gonna be much more successful in the long term. It's helped me a tremendous amount in terms of glute strength and using it for recovery and stretching. It's been fantastic. And the best thing about this thing, guys, is it's five bucks. Or if you have like little resistance bands around your house, I made this one. If you if you have a bike, you can use some tire tubes for it. There's, yeah, so there's a diff, bunch of different ways that you can get a resistance band. This thing though was five bucks and it's it's been fantastic. And it is quite easy to use, but depending on the complexity of the use case you're using it for, like if you're using it for some crazy workout, then I, I don't really know. Maybe it gets quite complex, but for the most part, it's easy to use. And I'm gonna do a video for you folks explaining exactly how I use this. Next up is running socks. And you might be thinking to yourself again, dude, what are you doing? You're, you're suggesting us get elastic bands and now socks? How is this gonna help me? now? I was in the same boat as you. I didn't quite understand what the point of buying specialty run socks was, but then I did and it opened up a bright new future for me and now I'm obsessed with running socks and it's maybe not the best thing for my bank account if I'm being totally honest, but guys, what this helps you do is when you're out there running, your feet aren't gonna get all swampy and soupy. The cotton used in normal socks can make it super sweaty and soupy and just you'll get chafing and it's just disgusting on your feet if I'm being totally honest. What this helps you do is wick away that sweat so your feet are staying pretty dry and honestly guys, I use these smart wool socks in the winter time and it keeps my feet nice and warm, but they don't get all sweaty and gross. It's pretty fantastic. So how much are these you ask? They are quite expensive, I have to say. They are about 15 to $30 per pair, depending on the style. So I, I know it's, it's gonna be a hard buy, but just trust me, if you have a couple extra dollars sitting around, 
go pick up a pair of running specific socks and you will thank me. Are they easy to use? Well, they're, they're a pair of socks, so I'm, I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with how easy socks are. Next up is a foam roller. Now, I'm sure that you're all pretty familiar with a foam roller, or at least have heard someone talk about a foam roller. What this helps you, again, with is recovery and mobility work. I use the foam roller pretty much every night to get all those knots out of my calves, my quads. I'm just, I'm a tight, knotty mess, if I'm being totally honest. And this foam roller, although it does look like some spiky death contraption and it doesn't necessarily look like it will help you, it does help me at least. I don't know if there's any proven benefits, but it does help me at least feel like I'm a little bit more limber and I don't have as many aches and tightness. I use this, like I said, almost every night and it's been quite fantastic. Now, how much are they? Well, this one right here was a fantastic deal. I got it at Costco for 20 Canadian dollars, but if you look on Amazon, they can range in price from like some are 15 bucks all the way up to like 80 and a hundred dollars. So it's quite insane, the, uh, the price difference, but all you really need to do is get one that will like work. So pretty much there's different densities. So if you're new to it, I'd recommend getting a slightly lower density one so you're not as sore because this one, like I said, it looks like a death contraption and it does hurt. Are they easy to use? Foam rollers are pretty easy to use. Again, it's the same as the resistance band. It just depends on what you're using it for. But majority of the exercises that I do are quite easy on the foam roller. And again, I'll, I'll include that in my resistance band video. Just I'll do a full mobility and recovery for beginner runners. Next on our list is some way to record your runs. Now, this could be using a traditional GPS running watch or an Apple watch if you have something like that or there's a bunch of free apps on the phone that you can use as well. The one I have up right now is the Nike Run Club app and I've used it a little bit, but I've always had a GPS running watch, so I don't have too much experience with the app. So if you have had experience, leave a comment down below letting others know how they work. I know that I've had a couple of friends use the Strava app quite excessively and they've had great success with it. So I think that being able to track your run solves a pretty big issue again, and that is seeing a visual indication of your progress while you're running. You're, it's also, you're able to store your progress on your phone and look back to see how much if you've made progress. And it, it's just a great motivator for me anyway. Having a visual indicator during my runs, if I see it at like 4.5 kilometers, there's just something about my OCD that I have to go finish off that last half a kilometer. So I'll push myself that little bit extra to get to the five kilometer mark. It also helps me keep track of my pace. So if I know if I'm going out too hard or too fast, Again, if you have like a heart rate monitor or something like that, you can attach it to your GPS running watch or your phone and measure your intensity. That's something that I will recommend in a later video is a heart rate monitor, but I didn't include that on this list because I don't think it will give a beginner runner the best bang for their buck at the time. How much is it? Now, the apps are typically free. The Strava app, you can pay for premium features, but it's not necessary. The GPS running watches can range in, in price quite a bit. They can go from like $100 all the way up to $1,000. So it just depends on your budget and how if you want to use your phone for your runs or not. Definitely recommend getting a cheaper running watch when you're first getting started. I have the Garmin Phoenix 5, which is one of Garmin's like, I don't know, fancier watches. It has a barometer, so it measures altitude and uh, elevation gain a little bit better, but guys, I don't think that is necessary for beginner runners at all. Now, are they easy to use? Yeah, they're super easy to use. Now, there might be some limitations if you're using your phone because GPS signal is quite dodgy if you live in like a city area. So if there's lots of bu buildings around and stuff like that, it can cause quite a bit of interference. So your GPS signal may not be the best. However, if you live out in the country like myself, I don't think you'd have any issues at all. Now guys, that is just my top five list. If you have a different list that you would recommend to new runners, leave it in the comments section down below so we can help these fine guys and gals get on their running journey just a little bit better. Now, remember, drink your water, get out there and run, and make sure you're prioritizing recovery. I will catch you on the next one. Have a fantastic evening. See ya later.